Well, 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 what do we have here? Well, I don't know for sure either. It's not by any popular brand, it's not like Sony or TDK, Maxell, BASF, Fuji, Axia, Denon. It's not by any of them. It's by Vision. What what is that? And um there isn't even anything on the on the wrapper. The wrapper is just clear plastic. What could this be? Well, this is called Type Zero. Now, it's a pretty popular term in the cassette community, Type Zero. And basically what it is, is rip-off tapes. Rip-off or imitation tapes. Um, in the Cassette Central Discord server, there is one popular Type Zero there called the Memex. It was just a inside joke. Um, I will link the server in the description and um, from this video onwards I will always be linking the server because you know we need s some more members and some more activity even though we have like a couple hundred maybe. Yeah, um, this is a type 0 tape. This is not something you want to buy. Just right off the bat, I just want to say that it's not something you want to buy. Like. I was not able to ID this, like I couldn't find anything on the internet regarding this cassette or um, when it was made or like who made it, of course Vision, but Vision is something else I'm sure. Yeah, um, I can't find it anywhere on the internet and so you shouldn't too, alright? Like I bought this back in December 2021 I believe, um, back when I bought the the Sony CHF from 1978, this came with the job lot. So I bought this um, just with the CHF, although I was absolutely looking at the CHF. And um, yeah, I was thinking, okay, maybe someday I'll make a Type 0 video, and today is the day. So, um, the definition of Type 0 has kind of evolved over the years. Back when cassettes were still very popular, um, back in like the uh, 70s, 80s, Type 0 generally meant like cassettes which didn't, sorry, cassettes which didn't fit like the IEC standards. Meaning, um, because of course IEC ha the IEC made um, specific standards for how cassettes should be formulated, like the um, the minimum required thing for like the mole and, and the sole and everything like that, all of those technical specs which I don't want to get into right now. Um, type 0 generally meant those cassettes which did not fit those standards and those cassettes which were sold like extremely cheaply um, in like back alleys and stuff. You know, places where you really wouldn't find high quality cassettes, that's where these were sold. And these are very bad for music, like they're acceptable for voice but for music just um, it's accepted that they're just not not good, but um, yeah. Also, the original cassettes, for example, the uh, I believe it's called the Philips nineteen o three o two, the very first cassette that was um, reel to reel tape, just slit in half to fit the cassette width, and that is an example of a Type Zero tape because it does not fit the IEC standards and. The very first cassettes from the early to mid 60s, even up to the late 60s, those were also um, exa those are also examples of Type Zero cassettes. Although I guess you could call them like Type 0 0.5 because at least they aren't like ripoff cassettes, you know. Um, also, later on in like the uh, in the 90s and the early 2000s, a lot of cassette, all a lot of like ripoff manufacturers, they chopped up. Um, VHS tape because like of course videotape accepts magnetic signals so it was a cheaper way to create quote unquote create um, cassette tapes they just chopped up the VHS tape until it reached the uh, the proper width of the cassette and the length um, but yeah that again it does not yield very good sound because of course VHS formulation is very different from cassette formulation they use different mechanisms different everything uh, yeah, but nowadays, yeah, Type 0 is generally referred to as just tapes that aren't good. Just rip off things, rip off, yeah, 
things that are sold very cheaply and also perform very cheaply. Alright, so now let us look at this particular cassette, the Vision SD60. Now, alright, in the front here, yeah, there once again there is absolutely nothing on the wrapper itself, it's just clear plastic. This is a very common thing among Type 0 cassettes. Um, another feature that's common on Type 0 cassettes is um, these solid black shows. Now, I know a lot of cassettes, especially from the 70s and the 60s, use these black shows, but later on, um, in like the 80s and the 90s, these black shows were starting to be phased out, and so if you see something like this and you can't identify the brand, that's very likely a Type 0. Um, aside from that, yeah, um, these these um, Type Zero tapes. Another show that they use are is um like translucent shows. It's like those shows which are like which have like a sort of tint of brown. They look a lot like the uh, Sony CHF in terms of how um, translucent they are. But yeah, they use that a lot as well because again, it's very cheap. And um. Yeah, I guess we should just look at the cassette itself now. Okay. Um, SD60, super dynamic, normal position, vision. Wow. Dynamic. Vision, normal position, EQ, 120 microseconds, SD60. Um, on the spine, it's just, again, the very simple SD60 vision here. Um, nothing super special. Vision SD provides super dynamic sound reproduction on pop music. Vision's high reliable mechanism is designed and built to prevent jamming, snarling, fouling, or other operational feature failures. Rather, IEC Type 1 tape selector normal position bias normal EQ 120 microseconds recording time 60 minutes 2 times 30 minutes. Yeah, this is one um one big red flag of Type zeros. You see that like it's in lowercase. Like, it's just not formatted, formatted, I don't know how you pronounce it, very professionally. It's not, it's not professional, like, at all, this design. And, yeah, like, come on. Prevent jamming, snarling, fouling. That's just a normal cassette. Like, you know, this is just the design of a cassette. How do you prevent jamming of the tape with the cassette, right? It is the machine that jams it. So it's the machine you're supposed to maintain, not the cassette. Um, of course, unless your cassette has like a billion bits of dust on it, or a billion bits of dirt rather, of course the machine will get affected by that, but yeah, this just this is just nonsense really, because it's up to the deck um, to uh, jam the cassette or maintain um, stability really. Of course, there's those like stability things regarding vibration, um, which is why you it's recommended to have heavier shells, but that's a completely different thing, and you, to be completely honest, you get diminishing returns from that anyway. So, like, let's just not get into that, okay? Um, here it has a frequency response graph, which I find very interesting. Look at that. Um, yeah, apparently the output is at plus four for everything, every frequency from... Um, 50 to 20k, 20 kilohertz, and even beyond. Yeah, from below 50 to over 20k. Like, obviously this is not, like... Obviously it's not gonna do that. I mean, I will give it a shot um, later in the uh, audio test. I will make it, like, go up to plus 1. But that's all I'm gonna do. Nothing on these sides, and, uh, okay. Um, I guess now, then, it is time to open this tape and let's see um, what it has to offer if any <laughs> okay um, all right I'll just scrape this then because there's no real um, pull tab thing all right there you go just very painfully well painful for my fingers not for my for my mind because I really don't care about this cassette I only have one of this and it doesn't matter to me like whenever I have um, sealed blank tapes 
I usually make sure that I have one of them, and if I have any others, then I'll unwrap them, but usually I keep as many in the wrapper as possible. But this one, I really don't care at all, because it's just such a bad tape. At least, you know, or so I believe. Yeah. Alright. Okay. There's the tape. We've already read everything on the J-card. And on this front bit in the cassette. Let me just set these aside. So. Okay. First. Oh, sorry. First impressions. Incredibly light. Like, usually whenever these cassettes with the solid black cases usually those are a lot more rigid and heavy than this but this is incredibly light like you can get a TDKD from like two, 2013 or something and it's going to be heavier than this this is this weighs nothing so already that's a sign of bad quality but anyway um, if we look at the tape it's just the thing I read a while ago with an A side and a B side there is nothing engraved onto the uh, shell although it is textured so that's quite nice um, just your generic everything here really uh, yeah just I'm, I'm quite surprised though that they used uh, metal screws yeah that that's very surprising to me metal screws yeah you don't usually see that on type zeros I think because of course they want to be cheap so they don't want to spend money on screws um, this J card again extremely plain like it's with this blabber of course if you look on the other side just invert it turn it inside out you can see there's even a printing error like look at that there's a printing error on the uh, other side and this is just the lowest quality card ever it's very thin like it just doesn't feel nice at all um, yeah just not not very nice SD60 uh, vision date or date and time noise reduction on or off and then A and B like again you can see there very bad for formatting because you know it's just lowercase it's really not very nice and I tell you for sure it's really not but anyway um, before we get into the audio test let me just quickly take a look at the tape itself let me wind it with the uh, with the pick okay um, I will admit that you can't really infer much based on the color of the tape but it is very brown um, there is a sort of reddish tint to it like looking at it in real life it's definitely not the type of chocolatey brown that you would see on like cobalt dope ferrix this is definitely a redder kind of ferric um, I don't I don't know if it's really obvious in the video but yeah it's it's a redder kind of ferric it definitely looks a lot like a pure ferric meaning no cobalt doping so this generally worse performance than um, cobalt dope tapes yeah it definitely definitely looks very pure to me pure ferric um, but let's see how this performs on the pioneer TD7 you know uh, I hope it doesn't ruin my deck like if it does so be it but I, I really doubt it will. Of course, I'll clean it thoroughly, the tape transport, before and after recording. And I'm never gonna use this again. But regardless, um, I hope to be pleasantly surprised. I will say that. Okay? Uh, but, yeah. Let's get into the audio test then. Alright, so now, let us begin the audio test of this. Type 0 over here, the Vision SD60 on the Pioneer TD7 cassette deck. Um, let me just turn this on now. Alright, oh, move the camera. Um, I have begun the auto calibration. Now, I really hope that this is able to, um, is it going to be able to 
calibrated at all because of course it's type 0 so I'm pretty sure the uh, the formulation isn't extremely good um, but yeah I'm just I'm just hoping that it's able to do something oh there you go okay that's already one good sign it was already able to um, auto calibrate um, I don't have very high hopes for this for this cassette of course because it is a type 0 but um, I am looking to be pleasantly surprised alright so the track we're using today is from the YouTube or YouTube audio library it's called what's it called let's see um, hold on now it's called summer solstice on the June planet by bail bonds it's a little bit under three minutes so it's, so it's gonna be a bit short for this video um, and I've set the levels to peak at just a little bit over 0 dB, so like plus 0.5, plus 1, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, let's see if, you know, let's just see how it does. So uh, yeah, let's begin. Oh, by the way, the uh, text for the source and the tape should appear down there right now. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go. What was that? Just... Huh, that was weird. Just stopped automatically. Let me just check the... Uh... Huh. I wonder why it did that. I, I apologize. It just stopped by itself. Well, let's just continue. So, what do I think about this cassette? 
Well, honestly, I was very pleasantly surprised, really. Like, it's not... It's not very good, but it's not very bad either. I was expecting something, like, you know, I was expecting it to have, like, a whole lot of noise and peak at minus 5 or something. But, yeah, more or less, it it wasn't able to go very far um, past 0 dB, but um, I'm pretty sure it did reach something like minus 1 or 0 um, or maybe minus two, I'm not sure, but it wasn't really as bad as I expected. But it's also not as good as advertised on the cassette, because it said on the on the back that yeah, you see that plus four. It advertised that it could go up to plus four on the levels, but of course that's not true. Um, it couldn't even reach plus zero, and. Um, there was like a little bit of distortion maybe um but yeah it definitely did okay in the uh, in the lows in the mids okay it's fine too i suppose in the highs absolutely suffered in the highs like you can definitely hear um barely anything really in the highs but yeah it's not as bad as i expected so maybe this is just one of the one of the better type zeros because of course even though this may be some kind of some kind of outlier or an isolated case or something, it yeah it's just an isolated case. That's all that this is. Like other type zeros are also very bad. Um, just I guess not this one. This one is still kind of bad, but not as bad as the others that I've heard about. Um, but yeah, that's that's really all I could say. Um, moral of the story. Uh, don't read the book by its publisher. Don't don't judge a book by its publisher <laughs> or something, because of course don't judge a book by its co- by its cover is the uh, is the is the appearance. Of course it appears cheaply made, but you know don't judge a book by its publisher because the brand. You know, um, sorry. Anyway, yeah, that's all I can really say. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I appreciate the uh, rise, the slight rise in views ever since I, I got back. Um, and uh, all of your support, once again, is very much appreciated. Also, I noticed that um, whenever I record the uh, audio test with the line in on my, on my PCM recorder, there is a very slight buzz that you hear like every like three times a second or two times a second. Um, I heard it a while ago because I was listening to uh, to the audio test on headphones and I uh, I accidentally turned up the volume a bit too much and I I heard that buzzing sound. Um, I apologize for that. Like it's not intended at all it's not a sound coming from the tape um it's definitely not coming from the deck because when i uh when i listen to it like just normally you know if i plug in my headphones to uh to the uh, headphone output i don't hear that buzzing so i'm guessing it's just something there's just something wrong with my uh with my cord the the cord which i use to um to connect uh, the the deck to my PCM recorder. I will have to take a look at that. It could also be the PCM recorder itself. Maybe I have to clean the contact or something. Um, I will I will take a, a look at that in the future. But for now, um, I guess we just have to live with that. Once again, that buzzing is not from the cassette, and it's not from the deck. It's either the cord or the PCM recorder. So, yeah, I'm looking into that. I'm going to be looking into that very soon. Um, next week, I'm not really sure what I'm going to make a video about because I am very busy next week. I have a bunch of things, um, to work on, and so I won't really have that much time. Now, um, on the uh, Elvis fans Discord server, discord.gg slash Elvis, uh, one of the uh, moderators, or rather the admins, Landy, he recently made a Sporko quiz, um... Asking if you could, you know, name every Elvis song in 20 minutes. And of course, I'm a big fan of Elvis Presley. 
Um, and I've done a Beatles one before back when I back when I had like very little time as well because of you know work and and school and things. I I did be I did a Beatles one a while back, um, and so I'm thinking maybe I should just do that Elvis one as well. Yeah, I apologize for you know that kind of delay in the videos, um, but I I will get the video done for two weeks from now. But yeah, next week, I I think that's all I'm going to be able to do. I'll try my best to um to find time to make a cassette video, but it's unlikely. So I might just you know spend those. 20 minutes um, working on this or rather answering the Sporkle quiz and I, I hope I don't do as badly as in the in the Beatles one last time anyway yeah that's about it type zeros don't get them even though this one was a little bit better than uh, than the others I've heard of <laughs> just yeah don't get don't get type zeros at all whatsoever whatever you do do not okay they may be cheap they may be easy to find, just don't, alright? No matter what, stick to the brands, stick to Sony, stick to TDK, stick to Maxell, Denon, um, Fuji, Axia, that's, you know, those brands which are trusted, and those brands which have been making quality cassettes for decades, until of course the cassette died, but that's besides the point. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching once again. Um, you can check out the playlist of all of my cassette videos up here in the corner. And I hope all of you are having a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.